Sticking with the usual naming scheme of hyphomen headphones, Deva is a Sanskrit word meaning heavenly or divine, and I've no idea if I'm using the correct pronunciation given the etymology of this word. Now the Hyphoman Diva is a full-sized circumoral open-backed headphone with a low impedance of 18 ohms and a rather low sensitivity of 93.5 dB. It uses a planar magnetic driver and its retail price is $300. Now that all sounds okay, but I could point to a number of other headphones in a direct competition at this price point. However, the Deva has an ace up its sleeve in the blue mini dongle, which effectively makes the Deva a Bluetooth wireless headphone with a planar magnetic driver for $300. So actually, now things are getting a lot more interesting. But I am a bit conflicted on how to judge the Deva. Not to get all philosophical, but are they a Bluetooth headphone that can be used wired, or are they a wired headphone that can be used via Bluetooth? Now that might not seem like a hugely significant distinction to make, but it does frame the discussion in subtly different ways. For example, is this a portable headphone, one that has a wired option, or is it a home hi-fi headphone that can be used wirelessly for convenience around the house, for example? Maybe the Deva is both. Well, we've got a lot to talk about, so let's just get into it. Hey guys, this is Noel and this is Wheezy Reviews. Each week I take a look at something audio related and let you know what I think. So if you're into that kind of thing, then make sure you subscribe. This is a long review. You know how I go in for those long detailed reviews. There will be timestamps in the description if you want to skip around. Full disclosure, Hi-Fi Men did loan these to me for my honest review. And as always, whether I purchase something myself or I get sent a review unit, I'm always going to give you my honest take on them. So let's start out with the idea that this is a portable Bluetooth wireless headphone. Now, one might expect a compact and lightweight design akin to the Audizy LCD-1. However, the Hyphoman Deva is very much a full-sized headphone. The weight is 363 grams without wires or the dongle, and the Blue Mini dongle adds another 28 grams to the package. Now, whilst this is an overall smaller and lighter headphone than the Sundara, I wouldn't call this a lightweight, compact, and portable headphone, especially with its open-backed nature. So with that said, I'm going to make a judgment call and say that the Deva is not a portable Bluetooth headphone. And to answer my question in the intro, to my mind, this is a home hi-fi headphone that has Bluetooth. And as we go forwards through this review, I will continue to judge it as such. But still, the distinction of whether this is a Bluetooth headphone or a wired headphone with the option for wireless is not immediately clear. And as I said, this distinction frames the discussion somewhat. So I'm going to go over the features and the sound, and then I'm going to circle back around to this point in the conclusion. Onto the physical features of the Deva. The build is a mix of metal and plastic with a metal headband and headband adjustment and ear cup yokes, and you have plastic ear cups, and this end piece here is also plastic. The headband is a deeply padded affair uh, with a pleather coating, and the shape of the headband distributes the weight quite well, and I find them really rather comfortable. There is a large range of vertical adjustment, which is done with this uh, ratchet slider here. Kudos for the very clean cable routing through this channel on the inside of the adjusters and the ear cup yokes. There is a lot of available vertical and lateral adjustment from the ear cups, although the lateral rotation does feel a little bit loose and rattly. The ear pads are very deep and springy and feature a wedge shape that is thinner at the front than it is at the rear. And that's the usual style for hi fi man headphones. These pads are a hybrid design featuring a pleather outer wall, a fabric internal face, and the inner wall is also made of pleather and they're really quite nice and deep. The pads themselves are very comfortable. However, this is almost unneeded as the clamping force of the Diva is incredibly light to the point that I felt the headphones shifting around on my head when walking around my house and doing the household chores. Bend down to pick something up and the Diva is likely to attempt to jump right off your head like it has a mind of its own. This does pour some water on the idea that the Diva could be the perfect kitchen companion for doing the washing up and even further distances them from being a portable headphone. Although people with larger heads might not have this issue, and I don't know if you could squeeze the headband to make the clamp tighter, 
This pair is on loan to me, so I don't want to do that with them. Again, people with larger heads might not have an issue with this at all. Uh, my hat size is small, if that's any help to you. Supplied with the Diva is a 2 meter braided cable, which is 3.5mm to 3.5mm mini jacks. And you might notice that we have a TRS connector on the one end and a TRRS connector at the other end. And that's because the Diva has been wired internally for balanced connections. This particular cable, however, is not balanced, obviously, and this cable is really quite stiff and at first quite annoying. It took a little while to straighten out the coils, but thankfully it doesn't hold any kinks and it's not microphonic. It is a fairly nice feeling cable, but for me, far too stiff and I would have much preferred a more flexible cable. Also in the box, you have a braided USB-A to USB-C cable, which is for charging the Blue Mini Bluetooth dongle. There's no carrying case or pouch included, however, just like with the Sundara, the box is lined with a softly padded silk-like material, so I guess this doubles as a storage box. Okay, so let's talk about the Blue Mini dongle, which is the real party piece of the Hi-Fi Mandeva. The dongle is shaped to fit the Diva specifically, and there's a spring-loaded clip to keep the dongle secure, and it has a 3.5mm balanced TRRS connector, which plugs into the left-hand ear cup. On the Blue Mini, there's also a microphone, a status LED, a USB-C connector, a charging mode button, and a power button. Now, there are no volume controls or any controls for play or pause or anything like that. You're going to need to do all of your controls from your playback device. A quick overview of what each of these features do, then the mic allows you to take phone calls on the Deva when paired to your mobile device, and I'm going to cut in a sample of the call quality now. As I mentioned, you can make calls using the Blue Mini Bluetooth adapter with the Hyphen and Diva. I've actually got this connected to my PC right now, and I'm recording the audio straight into Audition. I may have to boost the audio in post. I'll put a description down here on how much I've had to boost it. I haven't heard the audio myself yet, so uh, I'll be hearing this along with you. So I'll let you decide how it sounds, but this is how it sounds. The LED signifies the power and charge status of the Blue Mini. However, this flashes constantly when the device is powered on. And due to the placement of this LED, I do find this flashing to be really quite distracting. I can see the light of the LED bouncing off of my shoulder or off of the desk in front of me, and that can be particularly annoying in low light. The USB-C port is used for charging the device, and this can also be used to hook up to a PC and used as a USB DAC. Next to this, we have the charging mode button, which allows you to enable or disable charging when connected via USB. This is useful in case you wish to use the Blue Mini as a USB DAC and don't want to draw power from the playback device, which may itself be running on battery, such as a laptop. The Blue Mini operates over Bluetooth 4.2 and uses all of the best codecs. It uses SBC, AAC, Aptex, Aptex HD, and LDAC. So that's all of the bases covered. And in particular, it's really good to see LDAC support, so full marks there from me. Unfortunately, there is no multi-device connectivity, which is something that I expect to see in 2020. However, this is something that is missing on a lot of devices, so it's not all that unexpected. And perhaps not all that important, considering the use case as a home hi-fi headphone. The battery life of the Blue Mini is claimed at 7 to 10 hours. This is going to vary heavily depending on the codec in use and the volume that you're playing them at. I got somewhere between five and seven hours before I lost count, but seven to 10 hours does seem to be about right from my testing. As expected, there is a slight audio delay watching video from my PC, which is pretty standard, but there was no noticeable video lag from my phone, from my Android phone when watching video. Now I did actually try gaming with the Deva over Bluetooth and actually I had a really good experience and I didn't even notice the lag. Competitive gamers probably will notice the lag, but for casual titles, it never really got in the way of my enjoyment at all. Right, let's move on to the sound section, and we're going to have to talk about both the wired and the wireless performance. All listening was done using lossless sources. Wireless listening was done either from my PC over AptX or from my Android phone over LDAC. Wired listening was done from my PC through an O2S stack. Comparisons will be made to the Sennheiser HD6XX, which is my benchmark or reference headphone. I'm also going to make some comparisons to the Hyferman HE4XX and the Sundara. It's going to be pretty difficult to do this review without at least mentioning the Sundara. I'm going to start out with Soundstage, and I think they do a pretty good job. They definitely have a wider and more open staging than the HD6XX, and perhaps to a more similar level to the Sundara, but not as wide as the AKG K712 Pro. 
Now, I'm not going to say that the imaging is a weak point. It is an improvement over the 6XX, but compared to the Sundara, there's really no wow factor here. Imaging does seem to be a little bit blurry in a similar way to the 4XX. Now, related to soundstage and imaging, as a gamer myself, I did test out the Deva for gaming, and actually, I had a pretty good time for those open world or casual titles such as The Division 2 and RPG games, for example. Even over Bluetooth, I should add. Now, in terms of staging for gaming, they don't beat the AKG K712 Pro, but I did enjoy the Deva, perhaps more so than I did the Sundara for gaming. For more competitive titles, I didn't really find the combination of staging and imaging to give me what I really wanted. Honestly, I wouldn't buy this headphone for gaming, but it was nice to see that I could get away with it over Bluetooth. Moving on to bass, and bass isn't particularly big or present, particularly over Bluetooth. It seems like there is a bit of a roll off in the bass when using the Bluetooth dongle. And in wired operation, the bass and low mids do perform a bit better, but it still rolls off similarly to most other open backed headphones and actually presents quite similarly to the HD6XX. Now that's to say that the Deva has a good deal of that warm mid bassy sound that should be very familiar to Sennheiser fans, but they do lack that sub bass energy. Now, whilst bass on the Sundara also rolls off, it is a bit more prominent than on the Deva. Over Bluetooth, the bass was not so articulate and lacked some of that plucked and quick quality that one expects from a planar magnetic headphone. Again, I find a lot of similarities here with the HD6XX. However, in wired operation, that quickness and plucked planar magnetic quality comes back, leading to a much more articulate and detailed bass. So there is a difference in the bass swapping between wired and wireless. And this was quite obvious on Hotel California, where the bass just sounded a bit more natural in wired operation and had more of that plucked planar quality. The Deva is perhaps not the most dynamic headphone around, but in terms of their slam capability, I actually thought they did much better than expected and about on par with the HD6XX. And to the point that I could really enjoy the energetic kick drum for uh, EDM music like Deep Jungle Walk by Asterix. Now moving on to the mids and the low mids are a little bit more colored on the Deva than they are on the Sundara. And that's probably due to that mid bass warmth that you get with these. And actually that does remind me a lot of the HD6XX and it's perhaps no more colored than those. There is no real difference in the mids between wired and wireless, at least in terms of tuning. But with the Blue Mini, there is a hit to the detail and punchiness compared to being driven from a good desktop amp. Upper mids do suffer from a bit of graininess and unevenness compared to the HD650 and the Sundara, with the Sundara sounding much smoother and having a bit more detail. The Deva has a similar 2 kHz dip to the Sundara, but not to the same extent. Uh, the Deva also doesn't suffer the same 3 kHz glare as the HD650 either. For example, the lead guitar solo on Hotel California can be a little bit harsh on the 650, and there's no such issue there with the Deva. The Sundara does have a lot more mid energy between 3 kHz and 5 kHz, making the Deva sound a little bit more restrained in comparison and also a little bit less lively. Travel on the whole is also respectfully restrained and probably about on target for my preferences. Again, it is very similar to the HD650 or the Harman target. There's no denying that it is a little bit more grainy than both the Sundara and the 6XX, but on the whole, quite good. And there is a definite improvement over the 4XX. Now, there is something going on in the upper treble. I think a small peak somewhere around about 8 kHz that causes some sibilant harshness from time to time. And that's not something that I notice on either the 6XX or the Sundara. It's not bare dynamic levels of sibilance, but it is there on some tracks. The Sundara does have a bit of energy in the upper treble compared to the 6XX. And the Diva, I think, sits somewhere in between. On the whole, the Diva is quite similar to the HD650 in that it rolls off in more of that sort of Harman way, but for that 8 kHz bump, which does almost spoil it a little bit. It may not be noticeable, it is going to be track dependent, but a little bit of EQ can fix that right out. On the whole then, the Deva is a rather respectable headphone that comes in right about in that mid-fi category. It has an overall rather warm tonality, not too dissimilar to the HD6XX, although it does suffer in terms of detail and dynamics next to the Hi-Fi Sundara. Okay, let's talk about the use case, the price, the competition, and bring it on into a conclusion. 
I think that the HiFi Endeavor only really makes sense when viewed through the lens of it being a Bluetooth home HiFi headphone and not as a home HiFi headphone that can also be used via Bluetooth. That is to say that if you are primarily looking for a Bluetooth headphone for around the house, one that you will only use in a wired operation in a secondary capacity, then that is where the Daver makes the most sense. When used in this manner, the Daver really has no peers in this price point. I mean, if there is another open-backed Bluetooth headphone with a planar magnetic driver available for $300, then do let me know. In that regard, you could say that by virtue of being alone in the marketplace, the Deva could be considered the best Bluetooth headphone there is for $300. But let's not downplay the Deva by saying this. This is a rather good headphone in its own right that fits right into that usual mid five price point. Trading blows with the likes of the AKG K712 Pro and the HD650 and improving somewhat on headphones like the HE4XX. Now, despite having no peers saying that the Deva is a fantastic Bluetooth headphone, is still worthy praise. But where the Deva makes less sense is as a wired headphone. Whilst it does trade blows with the HD650, in this price point it will struggle against the value of the HD6XX. And in terms of raw performance for this money, the street price of the Sundara puts it only slightly more expensive than the Deva. And frankly, whilst the Deva is a rather good headphone, the Sundara is simply exceptional. So I think that settles my question from earlier on and pretty much concludes this review. The HiFi Mandeva is an interesting headphone, especially for those looking for a Bluetooth headphone for around the house. But for everyone else who might be looking for a primarily wired headphone, the HiFi Sundara is still probably the better choice. Right, that's going to do it for this review. If you like this video, then don't forget to leave a like. And if you haven't already, then please consider subscribing. And thank you so much to HiFiMan for sending these over for me to check out. Thank you so much to the patrons. And if you want to support the channel, then check the links down in the description. You can also support the channel by commenting, liking and sharing. It all helps me out a lot more than you think. And as always, thank you so much for watching and for making it all the way to the end. And until next time, have a good one.